The example I'm going to give is the one-dimensional Poisson's equation. The Poisson's equation is the square, uh, is the second-order derivative of u plus a known function f is equal to zero. And uh, let me solve this within the spatial domain of zero and one with the simplest type of boundary conditions. In this case, we no longer know what the solution u is. We only know that the solution u satisfies a certain differential equation. So how do we use the same procedure we discussed before to solve this equation? It turns out there are two ways to look at this. The first way is to try to integrate this equation with a function, right? So, so approach one. So let um, so I'm going to let a function g also to be zero and one to be let's say, to be smooth, okay? And what I'm going to do is that because this equation is equal to zero within the whole domain, I can integrate g of x times the residual of the differential equation, which has to be equal to zero everywhere. So this should be equal to zero within the, say, within the whole domain. And because this function is zero within the whole domain of zero, one, the integration of this function over <coughs> space should be equal to zero for any smooth function g, right? So basically, what I'm going to do is this has to be true for any g, right? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict f and g within the same linear space. So I'm going to restrict f is going to be forced to be a linear combination of a certain basis functions, phi i of x. And g of x, I'm going to force it to be the actual basis functions, j goes from 1 to n. The reason I can force g to be any of the basis functions is because if this equality is true for any of the phi j's, then it has to be also true for any linear combination of the phi j's, which covers an entire n-dimensional linear space. Right? Okay, so if I perform that restriction, what I'm going to derive out of the equality is I replace g with phi j. Okay. I'm going to um, I'm also going to replace, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I messed up. I shouldn't be replacing f, I should be, I should, I shouldn't be restricting f, I should be restricting the solution u. Previously, we restricted f because we wanted to approximate f. In this case, we wanted to approximate u, so we want to represent the solution u as a linear combination of these basis functions. So, to so represent u as this linear combination. So here, the ui's are not functions of space, and phi i's are functions of space. So we integrate ui, and the second order derivative is going to be applied to the basis functions. All right. So. Again, we are going to pull these summations out of the integral. What we get is summation of i goes from 1 to n, ui times the integration of 0 to 1, phi j of x times the second order derivative of phi i dx. This is the first term, and the second term is, is phi j times f. So 
plus Vj times f dx has to be equal to zero. Right? The difference between this equation and the equation we derived last time was that the phi i is has been taken a second order derivative. Well, last Wednesday, when we tried to approximate just the function f, basically, instead of solving a second order derivative of a phi u plus f equal to zero, we were basically solving minus u plus f equal to zero, right? We are trying to approximate f with a function. So in this case, we, we simply replace the phi i here by the second order derivative of phi i. So the following is the same. This and this is represented as a matrix and a vector, respectively. So if I define a i j to be equal to integration of phi j times the second order derivative of i, I'm going to say bj is equal to the integration of phi j times f, then this equation turns into a matrix equation au plus b equal to zero, right? And that is something I know how to solve.